The county was having a free dump day and one of my coworkers who was volunteering that day was able to save a few items for me and this was one of them. The worst part is that on first inspection it looks to be in great shape so I have to wonder if what's wrong with it is something you can't see and might be internal to the engine. Hopefully I'm just overthinking it but now I have to try and fix it just to find out. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Toro branded lawnmower and the problem is that it was found at the city dump presumably because it's broken and there's no chance in fixing it. Why else would someone take something to the city dump? Most likely it needs a new engine or something else that's not repairable without spending a ton of money on it. At least that's what I'm thinking. Now if that's a possibility, then why would I even bother bringing it home then? Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower, but yours might be a little different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in this video, please ask about it, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. One of the other reasons why I wanted to save this mower is because it's a Toro, and I have a soft spot for them since it's a brand I used as a kid about 200 years ago. And even though it doesn't look like the same one I used as a kid, I still like it, and I'm going to try to save every one that I can find, whether it's free or not, but obviously free is preferred. The first thing that I want to do is to check the oil and it's surprising that it's not completely dirty. In fact, the color of the oil tells me that someone was taking good care of it. If that's the case, then why would they try to get rid of it then? In fact, after checking the oil level, it's at the full mark on the dipstick. Someone really cared for this mower and it really shows. The strange part is that when you look inside the fuel tank, it's more than halfway filled. In today's market, that's worth at least one goat if not two lambs and a pint of butter. Take that inflation. Now looking under the mower, hopefully we see a blade, which we do luckily, after that we'll then look for any damage to it. Now one of the worst things that you can do besides run your engine low on oil is to try and use your mower as a stump grinder. Now this will damage the blade, which could damage the engine as well, but surprisingly it's in good shape. So at this point I'm getting worried that this mower is not broken and that it just won't start. So at this point, I'm really confused. There's plenty of good oil in the engine and apparently even good fuel. There's no damage to the mower and it just started and ran without any issues. So why was this at the dump again? The only thing that's wrong with it is that the self-propelled cable is obviously broken. So unless the transmission is broken as well, it would seem that aside from needing a $10 cable, they didn't want the mower anymore and thought the best place for it was the dump. Now, believe it or not, I'm hoping the transmission is broken, but why would I want that? Because it would justify it being thrown away. I guess we don't have any other choice but to replace the cable and find out, but I do have one major gripe with this mower. This mower is extremely tough to push. I'm not sure what's going on with it, but it might be related to the self-propel. So before we get too far ahead with the repairs, I want to get a pull reading on it and see what kind of numbers we get. So on our first pull, we get a reading of 3.42 kilograms, which if you didn't know is much too high for a mower like this. It should be between 2 and 2.5 kilograms. That means we'll need to service the wheels and see if that'll be enough to fix it. And even though our second pull got a much better reading of just over 3 kilograms, that's still not going to be good enough. Now to get to the drive cable, we'll need to remove the cover for the belt, and I'm 99% sure there's going to be a lot of dirt and grass under it, which means we'll need to clean it. And since I'm going to need to do some cleaning, I might as well pull out the sprayer and the cleaner and give it a once over. And the reason is because I'm more than likely going to sell this mower and it's much easier to sell one that's clean versus one that's dirty. Now I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that this mower was dumped like an unwanted pet. It had one small issue that would have been very simple to fix, but instead they decided on the ultimate betrayal and took it out to be crushed. But why would you do that? What's so wrong with just posting it up online as a free mower? And if you're really, really lazy, just put it by the trash cans on pickup day and I promise you it's going to disappear unless you live on a dead end street. Now the best answer to the question of why they dumped this mower has to be pretty simple. They didn't think it was useful anymore and to ensure that it was never going to be useful again, they dumped it in a pile with a bunch of other useless stuff. If only they knew that there was someone there who realized that it was still useful, pulled it out of the pile and set it aside, and then made contact with someone who was willing to try and fix it. I don't know why, but some folks are so opposed to the idea that what they see as trash, someone else might see as an opportunity. I have to wonder, would that qualify as someone being selfish, that it's their stuff and it's up to them to decide what should be done to it, whether that's being repaired, being damaged, or even the possibility of it being destroyed? Either way, once we get most of the dirt and oil off this mower, I'll replace the cable, inspect and sharpen the blade, and finally service the wheels. Then we'll get it back on the ground and see just how bad this mower really is, and I sure hope I'm right. 
Now, I really do like the idea of having this metal guard for the muffler, but 90% of the time I see one of these, they're either banged up, missing bolts, or just missing altogether. Now, according to the information on this engine cover, this mower is more than a decade old, which is pretty good considering all that can go wrong with the mower. But to be quite honest, these engines from Briggs were some of their best in recent times. Now, if you didn't know, I'm a huge fan of Honda engines when talking about power equipment, and I'm not alone in thinking that, but nothing beats the simplicity and the longevity of this engine. And if you keep the oil changed and the cooling fins clean so that they don't overheat, these little engines will last for a very long time, long enough that you might find it difficult to get parts for them. I really shouldn't be too hard on the person who wanted to get rid of this mower. There are those out there that can refinish old furniture, troubleshoot old electronics, or something that you're not capable of doing, and yet there's someone out there who can deal with it. So what's my advice then? Should you go out of your way and try to figure out a better way of getting rid of something that you don't want, like furniture, old TVs, or better yet, old lawnmowers? No, not really. It's your stuff, so do what you want with it. I bet you thought I was going to say something else there, didn't you? Unfortunately, it would be unrealistic in thinking that someone should try and find the best way to get rid of something instead of doing it the way they would want to. Of course, it'd be a real shame if you threw away something that was technically still good and that was still useful, but I'm sure it happens more time than anyone really knows. Now, besides mowers, it would seem like one of the most irritating items to start is a two-stroke trimmer, especially if it's a few years old, and even though more than likely the reason it won't start is because of the carb, I'm sure a few good trimmers have been tossed across the yard because they wouldn't start. In fact, a good portion of the trimmers that I've picked up have all had issues with the carb that would have made them very difficult to start or run correctly, and what happens is most times they'll just let them sit there in the garage for a long time or give them away the same day it wouldn't start. The strange part is that it doesn't seem to happen to leaf blowers as much, so I rarely get them, but you can almost bet that their issues are also related to the carb as well. So here's a quick tip, if you can't get a machine to start and run, try replacing the carb unless you want to go through the steps and trying to clean the carb, which can be a real pain sometimes. So we're finally ready to replace the broken cable, which to be honest doesn't seem to happen all that often. Now the cable was only $10 online, which is a small price to pay so you can have your self propel working again. Now on this type of system, the cable will help to put tension on the drive belt, so when not in use, the belt will be very loose, but this is not always typical. Some drive systems will have a belt that's always under tension and the drive cable might work a lever in the gearbox instead of putting tension on the belt. After connecting the lower end of the cable to the gearbox and its anchor, I'll then disconnect the upper part from the handlebar. Now this will make it a lot easier to install, although it is still going to be a bit tricky unless you use a flathead screwdriver. Now if you need the cable or the other cable for the brake handle, there should be links to them in the description, although you do need to make sure it's the right one you need for your particular model. Once the new cable is installed in the original anchor, I'll then reconnect the cable ends to the handles and then finish installing the anchor to the handlebar. Now, don't tighten the nut for the anchor just yet until you've adjusted the position of the self propel cable to work with the lever. After that, I'll then start to put all the covers back onto the mower and then move on to something that's been very annoying on it, which is of course the situation with the wheels. So according to past experiences with mowers that are difficult to push, most times it's the drive wheels that are the issue, but that's not a rule, so we'll still need to look at all of them. So what's causing them to have this issue then? Well, from what I can tell, it could be that they're leaving the mower outside in the rain for a long time, or they'd like to wash their mowers, but instead of allowing them to dry off, they'll put them up in storage while still wet. This would of course lead to corrosion on the bolts for the wheels. Of course, the fix would be to remove the wheels and then clean the bolt, and then if it's really bad, clean the opening in the wheels of any rust. Then apply some sort of lube or graphite, which I'll leave up to you. After that, just make sure the mower doesn't get rained on or leave it in the sun for at least an hour before putting it up. Oh, and the cleaner I'm using on the wheels so they get this clean is a degreaser I get from a freight store. I use it at full concentration, so you have to be very careful when using it on paint, otherwise you're going to ruin the finish. Now the back wheels didn't have a real issue with spinning at all, so I'm going to guess that yet again it's going to be the drive wheels just like normal. Now once the wheel is back on the mower, you can see that it's spinning rather nicely now. So here's the front wheel, and yes, it's certainly not wanting to spin like it should, which is never going to spin like the rear wheel, but it should spin a lot better than this. Now don't be fooled, since I got done spraying water all over the wheel to clean it, some of it has gotten to the bolt and made it much easier to spin than before the cleaning. Before the cleaning, it was a lot more difficult to get it to start to spin, let alone freewheel like it is now. After getting the wheel back on the mower, it's not going to spin any differently than before, but in person you can tell it's much better, so I'm hopeful that I'm going to get a much better reading on the pull meter. 
I'm also going to install the old filter back into the air box because it's still in great shape. Like I said, someone was taking care of this mower so it's surprising that they would get rid of it. And of course, it wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't put the old fuel that came out of the fuel tank back in it. But this time, I'm not as worried about it being stale. As you can tell, it doesn't look anything like the mower I initially put on the table. In fact, it looks like a mower that someone would want to keep now. Now once back on the concrete, I'll use the meter a few times and see what kind of improved readings we now get, and I'm not disappointed at all. On the first pull, we got a reading of a little over 2 kilograms, which is a huge improvement. And on the second pull, we got an even better reading of 1.8, which means servicing the wheels definitely helped out to make this mower a lot easier to use. So the mower started right up with no issues and besides needing a minor increase in engine speed, it seems to be working just fine. Now there was a slight clicking noise from the engine but it turns out I didn't install the recoil correctly to the base and a small plate was making intermittent contact with the magnets on the flywheel but I did fix it off camera. And since the engine was at least warm, I then decided to change the oil which to be honest is the least you can do just to make sure this engine is going to keep working for as long as possible. Now when pouring oil into the engine, just make sure that you don't overfill it and you might want to check it again after another cold start because checking the oil can be difficult when the oil is brand new. Now it turns out the brake cable works to activate the self-propel so it's definitely working so my hope that the transmission was even broken didn't come true. So why would they have thrown this mower away the way they did? Was it out of ignorance or something else? I can only hope that they were misinformed about its condition and thought it was much worse than it really was, so to them, this was the best choice. Now my honest advice is to make a choice on how you want to deal with issues like this one, but I will say this, there are better choices out there. Luckily we were able to save yet another mower from the scrap pile and hopefully someone will get a great mower to use for at least another 10 years. So my question is, how much damage would a mower have to have before you take it to the dump? Does the engine need to have a hole in it, or does it simply need to have a really high repair quote? Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.